Mm, let me also mention another way at looking uh, at uh, pricing of a caplet. Let's just uh, simplify the notation a little bit and denote by P the price of the TI bond at time TI minus 1. Okay, so um, th these couplets again depend on, on these two times. Uh, we are really thinking of uh, time periods at which uh, LIBOR rates uh, uh, or maybe are announced quarterly or, uh, or uh, you know, if you if, if you are involved in a swap or some uh, payments that you have to pay at TI minus one, TI, TI plus one. All right, so I can then rewrite the the formula for the LIBOR rate as L delta T. If I'm not writing T's, it's L delta T uh, is equal to one over P minus one. Okay, that's uh, just the uh, Coming back from uh, this formula for the LIBOR rate, uh, I can uh, move uh, delta t to the uh, to the other side, and uh, I can write the LIBOR rate formula uh, like that. Uh, this is why is this? Uh, it's not. I didn't tell you exactly why this is. Because if, if I put small t equal to the ti minus 1, then this be becomes 1. Right? If I have p of ti minus 1, ti minus 1, that's just the value, the payment of the bond at maturity, which I'm assuming is 1. So that's why this becomes just 1. All right, so I have this formula for the library at ti minus 1. Uh, and uh, so then it's not the forward rate, then it's really just the rate at ti minus 1 uh, corresponding to the period ti minus 1 to ti. So if I write the, the, the couplet payoff, it's this minus rc, well, this over delta t uh, minus rc. Uh, so if I write the couplet payoff was written here. So instead of L, I write my formula. If you do that, you, you can write it as 1 over P and then constant minus 1 plus RC delta T positive part. Okay, That's just replacing L from here, substituting L from here into the payoff of the couplet. Let's call that C of TI, C for couplet. That's pay the time TI. And now I'm going to do the following trick. I'm going to factor out 1 plus rc delta t over p. And I'm going to get here 1 over 1 plus rc delta t minus p positive part. So now this part looks like a put option. And I'm going to call this k uh, for the strike price. Uh, so I'm going to think of this as a strike price of a put option, uh, except it's not quite the put option because I'm multiplying with, with this thing, which is random. Uh, P is random here. Uh, so it's not just put options, at least not at the first uh, side. Um, but OK, I write the payoff as 1 over this constant k um, p uh, times k minus p positive part. Well. There is something special about this payment. This is a payment which is paid at time ti. However, it's known at time ti minus 1. Because p is the bond price at time ti minus 1. So it's known at time ti minus 1. Uh, and so th we haven't really looked at a case like this before. It's a payment which is paid at ti, but it's known already one period before, at ti minus 1. I can use that fact to actually compute, or uh, at least uh, represent, uh, the uh, price of this in terms of put options. So I'm going to do that in the next slide. Right, so this payoff is paid at time ti, but is known at time ti minus 1. I claim that any payoff uh, which is paid at time ti 
but whose price is known at time ti minus 1, then its value at time ti minus 1 is the bond price at ti minus 1 times the payoff. I, I, I just write C, but C is C of ti. Okay? Why? Why is the value at ti minus 1 of this payoff at ti, uh, which is known at ti minus 1 but, but paid at ti, why, why is it P times C? Well, what's the value? The value is uh, how much money I have to invest at ti minus 1. It's cost of replication. How much I have to invest at ti minus 1 to have, uh, to have C uh, time uh, uh, ti. Well, suppose I, uh, uh, I invest, I, I simply buy uh, C bonds. How, is that, how much is that going to cost me? Uh, I know C at Ti minus 1. And, and Ti minus 1, I buy C bonds. Right? If I do that, I will have exactly C dollars in, at time Ti because each bond pays $1. Okay? But to buy C bonds, I exactly need P times C dollars because each bond costs P. This is the price of the bond. Right? So once again, because I know C at time Ti minus 1, I know how many bonds I have to pay. Uh, buy, so I buy C bonds that cost me that costs me uh, P times C because each bond costs P, a and I will have uh, I will have so I bought C bonds, which means I will have C dollars at time Ti, Ti, which is what I want to replicate. So the value of C at the previous period at Ti minus one is P times C. All right, which means that the payoff of the couplet, which is the payoff at time ti, is equivalent to the payoff of p times the couplet at time ti minus 1. But if you look at p times the couplet, then p and p will cancel, right? I have here 1 over p. So p and p will cancel, and I, I will have 1 over k, k minus p positive 5. Now it really is 1 over k put options. Yeah? Uh, regular put options on the bond price uh, and therefore pricing a couplet which is paid at ti is the same as pricing 1 over k put options paid at ti minus 1. Okay? So it's equivalent to 1 over k put options on the bond maturing at ti but the option maturity, the put option maturity is equal to ti minus 1 and the strike price is equal to k. So if you have a model in which you know how to price put options and bonds, and then you can price a couplet, uh, the, the corresponding couplet. Okay? So once again, couplet is paid at, a, at TI, but we use the fact that its payoff is already known at time TI minus 1. And then we use uh, this uh, logic here to conclude uh, that uh, pricing the payoff equal to the couplet payoff C of Ti at Ti is the same as pricing this payoff, which is 1 over k put options, paid at Ti minus 1. Right? So it's a put options uh, written on a bond which matures at Ti, but the options themselves mature at uh, Ti minus 1. All right, so that's, uh, that's about couplets. Uh, the similar logic works for floorlets. And that's it for this set of slides.